and a connoisseur of good skin and good skin products. And I know a lot about the skin. And when, and when I do my talks about doing my talks about skin, I'll always ask people about dry skin. I'll say, how many of you guys have dry skin? And invariably, everybody raises their hands. Pretty much everybody has dry skin, CH, everybody. But here's the great irony. Nobody's supposed to have dry skin because the skin has moisture factors built into it that keep the skin from being dry. Human beings arose out of the ocean millions of years ago when we evolved mechanisms, our skin evolved mechanisms for keeping the water in. So skin is not supposed to be dry, and it always represents a biochemical mishap. It represents disease. It represents a health issue. It is not a moisturizer problem. And oh, what's even worse, the more moisturizer you use, the drier your skin will be. That's because when you put a moisturizer on, a typical wax and oil and, and emulsifier and and a silicon a mo a moisturizer, you seal the skin and you prevent the skin from reading the ambient humidity. The skin is a responsive organ that's responsive to how, mo how much moisture is in the air. And when there's not a lot of moisture in the air, we're supposed to make more moisture factors. But if you wear a moisturizer, you put on a moisturizer cream, which everybody does, you suppress that mechanism. You shut down the skin's responsiveness, and now your skin becomes drier than it ever was before, thus the phenomena of becoming addicted to your moisturizer lotion where the more you use the more you need now no skin health company no skincare company on the planet is going to tell you this because they want to sell you those stupid products oh by the way when you use a moisturizer not only are you suppressing your skin's natural moisture factors but you're interacting with preservatives and fragrances and surfactants and emulsifiers and chemicals that are nasty and don't belong anywhere in or on your body so what do you do if you have dry skin well, dry skin is most often caused by a fat problem. I don't mean too much fat. I mean not enough fat. And I'm talking dietary fat, particularly, specifically, essential fatty acids, EFAs. They are the true cure for dry skin. Now, unfortunately, it's not as simple as just taking EFAs because you've got to make sure you're absorbing them. But the first thing you've got to do is make sure you're getting them. Now, if you're not supplementing with your ultimate EFAs, you're not getting your EFAs because they're not in the food. Now, the word essential, if you've been listening to this program, you know anything about nutrition, you know that essential means you better have it or you're dead. That's how important fatty acids, EFAs are. They're essential. You don't have them, you're dead. Now, if you have a little bit of them, you're not going to die, but you may suffer with some health issues, including dry skin. So the first thing you want to do is get on your ultimate EFAs, first and foremost. If you're absorbing your fats, that's a cure for dry skin right there. However, Many of us, if not most of us, especially as we get older, don't absorb our fats. So in addition to taking your ultimate EFAs, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night, or you can take even more, you want to make sure that you're using supplements that help your body absorb your EFAs, particularly the ultimate enzymes, which are, contain something called lipase and also bile salts, both of which are very important for helping the body process fats. You want to take your ultimate enzymes with your ultimate EFAs, and then you want to start to use fatty nutrients, fatty vitamins, particularly vitamin A, and also to a certain extent vitamin E, but especially vitamin A. Vitamin A is ridiculously important, not only for moisturizing the skin, but for drying up oily skin. It goes both ways. We call vitamin A a skin normalizer in the sense that if your skin's too oily, it dries it out. If it's too dry, it makes it more moist. 20,000, 20,000, 20,000 international units of vitamin A a day. And again, if you're not supplementing with vitamin A, you're not getting that much. You're, it's very difficult to find, but unless you're eating a lot of liver or organ meat, it's very difficult to get vitamin A from your food. Vegetarians, you're out of luck. Vitamin A is only found in animal products. And don't give me that hoo-ha about beta carotene. It's not vitamin A, no matter what anybody tells you. Let me say that again, because that's so important. Beta carotene is not vitamin A. And if anybody tells you that, they don't know what they're talking about. Beta carotene can be converted into vitamin A, but not everybody does that effectively. So if you're a vegetarian, that's the best you're going to be able to do. Make sure you're using beta carotene, but if you're not a vegetarian, make sure you're using 20,000 IU of vitamin A a day. Topical vitamin C can also have some very interesting effects for skin moisturization because the moisture factors that I was talking about depend on vitamin C for their stimulation and production. So using a fatty vitamin C topically is the best way to address dry skin from a topical standpoint. I would be staying away from lotions and moisturizers unless you want to be addicted to your lotion or moisturizer or if you're absolutely, absolutely miserable, you can get some superficial symptomatic relief from moisturizers, but you run the risk of suppressing your own moisture factors. So for dry skin, I think fats, essential fatty acids, also to a certain extent, 
uh, saturated and saturated and non-essential fatty acids, omega-9 fats, which are found in olive oil, uh, coconut oil, which is a saturated fat, butter is a saturated fat, but primarily you're looking at essential fatty acids, particularly omega-6 essential fatty acids. You get those in the ultimate EFAs. Make sure you're absorbing them. Last but not least, when it comes to fats, and we'll talk about this over the coming days as we discuss the endocrine hormones, the steroid hormones, the cholesterol hormones, as I'm going to start calling them, probiotics and good bacteria are very important. They help the body process fats as well. So getting on a good probiotic supplement like the Biolumin Nightly Essence or perhaps making sure you're eating fermented food. And I should say eating fermented food is another strategy. EFAs, make sure you're absorbing your EFAs using digestive enzymes and bile salts and then also probiotics, good bacteria, and topically, use topical lipophilic vitamin C. You can find that, by the way, at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Look for my omega-6 healing cream, which is unbelievably moisturizing. Does that help you, CH? Yeah, I appreciate your information. My my pleasure. And thank you very much, Mr. Smith. God bless you, my friend. Have a beautiful day, CH, in Alabama. All right, Graziano, my buddy, what's up? Where you been? Uh, uh, hey, how's it going, Ben? Going good. What's cooking today? Hey, nothing much. Hey, um, just a quick question. Yes. I'm doing good, by the way. But a quick question, and then I get to get back to work. Um, really, uh, my 15-year-old, I just wanted to cover, I can't remember, but I thought of calling you uh, T-zone acne. And then T-zone on his acne. cheek, and then on his cheek, he's got a this white patch. I know he comes up in a lot, so... This is your kid? Today. This is did yeah. you say this is your kid? I didn't know you had a kid. I thought you were a kid, Graziana. You, you, you have <laughs> no, a fifteen got three. You got three kids? Didn't you tell me you're yep. like in your twenties or something? <laughs> Maybe in my thirties. Okay. All right. So you're an old man. That's all right. So here's the deal. For for acne. It sounds like a little bit of eczema too for the for the child with yeah, the little white patch. Have eczema. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Here's the deal for teenage acne or T zone acne, which is teenage acne. T zone is uh the area that's marked by the forehead, that's the top of the T, and then the middle of the face. There's lots of sebaceous glands, sebum glands, oil-producing glands in that T-zone. So when you have T-zone acne as opposed to acne on the sides of the face, you're dealing with hyperactivity of the sebum glands, the oil-producing glands. There's lots of strategies for that, and it typically happens in teenage during the teenage years because of the relationship of male hormones. There's a surge in male hormones during the teenage years, and that causes excessive oil. First of all, reducing sugar intake is very important. Now, there's nutrients you can use for for helping stabilize sugar. Those are important too, but in the interest of time, reducing sugar intake, using the B vitamins, especially vitamin B5, which is almost like a miracle for slowing down oil production. Pantophenic acid, I'd be using one to four grams a day. You can even do five or six grams if you like. And then as we said uh, with our last caller, vitamin A, the normalizing vitamin is also important, both internally and topically. Use my retinol 5% gel topically. Not only great for blackheads and oily skin, but you also get the anti aging effects of retinol. It's lots more Graziano, but that's a good start. B5, reduce your sugar intake. Make sure you're using vitamin A topically in the form of retinol and then also internally 20,000 IU a day. That's all the time we have for today. I apologize if I left you on hold. I'm